Hello again everyone and welcome back to Dragon Age Inquisition. We are back here in uh, Halam Shiral, in the, well, in the Winter Palace, just outside of Halam Shiral. And um, we have some negotiations to do, but first things first, I would like to catch up with our old friends, obviously. So we have Josephine, we have Varric, we have Cullen, Vivienne, Vivienne is here, Liliana's here, Blackwall's here, Cole is here, Iron Ball's here, Sarah, so, so everyone is here. Basically, it's 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 not a case of everyone's just gone when we only have a limited group. Everyone is here in some some sort of respect, which is good. I didn't want to have this happen with a, you know a limited number of people. Is there any exploration to do at all? Mm, there is actually. There must be something here. What's that? Expensive dog treats. Don't know what we need that for, but okay. The first Grand Enchanter. Grand Enchanter Lothair Harduin was the first leader of the Circle of Magi when it was founded in 120 Divine. After Harduin dis distinguished himself in battle during the Second Blight, Emperor Draken himself endorsed him for the position. From all, in for from all accounts, the Grand Enchanter performed admirably, but some speculate Harduin was a second choice. That Draken had another mage with connections to Inquisitor Meriden in mind for the job. Tellingly, these these debates are based on a half-finished letter to an army captain and the guest list of a party where Merid and the Emperor were in attendance. If any proof ever existed, this is likely dust. The idea's merit should be treated as such for scholarship's sake. Do we have any of the Codex stuff which we haven't looked at, by the way? We actually do, don't we? Um, that, that, that's Corypheus. He's, he's, he's dead now. Um, well, we hope, anyway. Ah, Solus. Despite my efforts, I've been unable to locate Solus. From the site of your battle with Corypheus, he, he, he was last seen headed west, still distraught over the destruction of the orb Corypheus carried. From there he disappeared, evading my people so easily and so completely that I am now forced to wonder how much he knew about them. When Solus initially approached the Inquisition and offered aid, I questioned him extremely extensively about his background and history. He was evasive, but he did give the name of the village where he grew up, and nothing, noting that it was small, unlikely to appear on any map. I hate loose ends, so I kept a few of my agents searching to verify his story. They recently located the village, or what remains of it. It is a ruin, and it, as it has been for centuries, its name preserved only in degraded form and ancient of inter-mysteries. Whoever Solus truly is, wherever he came from, he has deceived us from the very start. I apologize for not investigating this more thoroughly while Solus was here. He was clearly helping us, and other matters were of greater urgency. But it was an oversight, nevertheless, given how little he shared with us. It is not clear what his plans are, if any, but I will continue to search. Well, it turns out he was an old god, so I mean, that's that's just one of those things which, which you know, you can never really plan for, can you? Um, I believe Fenharal himself. Uh, I'm not sure. It's, it says we have another entry here somewhere, but I can't see where the, where the star is. Unfortunately. Oh, here we go. Ah, Cassandra Pentagast. Now a hand is raised, the sword to pierce the sun. With iron shield she defends the faithful. Let chaos be undone. The canticle of Victoria. That's that's good. What creatures do we have? I think these are just research, aren't they? Uh, history, however, we may have more history. There is very little of the infamous 13th verse that we can take literally. It speaks in the voice of the Maker himself, since he has never deigned to speak to his children directly. We can rest we can rest assured it is a work of fiction. There are facts, however, which support it, at least in part. Records remain from the time prior to the first blight, saying that, yes, seven magisters did open a portal to enter the Fade physically. These seven, whose true names we have lost either to legend or deliberate obscurement, did so at the behest of the old gods, who whispered from their ancient prisons. We also know that the Golden City, visible from every part of the Fade by any mage at the time, turned black as night from black as night the moment these seven breached its gates. Everything else, the accusations of sin, the suggestion that these seven became the first Darkspawn, that they were directly responsible for the blights to come, all of that is conjecture. Right. So that is literally what just popped up there, but obviously we we already know about those. Um Right. So let's go and have a wander down this side first. See what lovely people we can talk to. This is the main plaza. Yep, indeed. Scout lays harding, swift and conning. Her arrows cut you down to size. Scout lays hard. 
flirting, talked about taunting, laughed so the light will flee your eyes. Born of the ground, loyal and sound, inquisition bound. Scout lays harding, battles calling, inquisition's bloody prize. Scout lays harding, smile of warning, smirk at fear and laugh in the eyes. Born of the ground, loyal and sound, inquisition bound. Scout lays harding without warning, makes men fall like tarnished crowns. What can be said to all who have fled the dwarf with a freckled face? But all who remained to stand in her way met with her arrow's fate. Scout lays harding, swift and cunning, her arrows cut you down to size. Battles calling, inquisitions, bloody prize. Scout lays harding, smile at warning, smirk at fear, and laugh in the eyes. Born of the ground, loyal and sound, inquisition bound. Scout lays harding, swift and cunning, her arrows cut you down to size. That was that was one of the few songs in this game that I generally felt compelled to sit and listen to. That's that was beautiful. Genuinely, what's what 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 have I just? Is that another expensive dog treat? So those are so all these are crafting materials. We probably have some stuff to sell. Agony, yep, can sell agony. That's fine. Yep, can sell all this stuff. Accessories. Uh, uh. Oh, do, I didn't mean to sell the amulet of power. Buy back. Amulet of power. Whose amulet of power is that, Vivienne? Damn it. Can I, can I please loot that? There we go. More expensive dog treats. I don't. I don't exactly know what what we for what what purpose we will be using those for. Oh. That's a very nice greatsword, that. However, unfortunately, we don't have anybody who actually uses a greatsword, so... How about these ones? These are more crafting materials. And these are more crafting materials. And are these more crafting materials? Uh, yes, they are more crafting materials. <laughs> well, this one? Do we, do, we, do we use this one? You literally just have a helmet for sale. Hmm. Nice of you to, to form such a great inventory for the Exalted Council there. What's this? Blackwall in the last few years. An excerpt of report bearing the seal of the Grey Wardens found among Inquisition files. Tom Rainier. Participated in, in Grand Tourney. Former captain of Orlesian Army. Known for murder treason. Also known for impersonating a Grey Warden. One, con one Constable Blackwall of Alshavan, member of Inquisition, played role in, de in the defeat of Corypheus. Status, recruited, joining, survived. Assignment, free marches, Vimark Mountains, reporting to one Stoudenmire in ongoing investigation of Vimark Prison. Huh. So what's new with Blackwall then, apart from all that jazz? Fashionably late. I thought you weren't gonna show. <laughs> I gave you my word we would talk, and I never break my word. Easy there. I was just teasing. <laughs> so tell me everything that happened while I was away. And Garolf strolls up, hands filled with ripe squashes, and says, Sir, I must report that it was an utter boondoggle. An utter <laughs> boondoggle? Excuse me. Uh, Maybe you had to be there. <laughs> this new life suits you. It's good to see you fitting in. It has its warts, that's for sure. But this life feels right. Like it's where I'm supposed to be. Anyway, it's nice to be back. 
Though I'm not sure what to think of this council. The wardens will be missing me, but they aren't going to keep me away from a friend who might need my sword arm. Maybe, maybe you should stop. I'm getting a little worried for the palace, and any passers-by. <laughs> <laughs> that was a nice conversation. Can we speak to him anymore? Inquisitor. No. Okay, so, so you probably get one conversation with everybody around here. That's fine. So we have a crafting thing here. I'm not sure. Oh my god, the golden nug! This will synchronize your collectibles across games by downloading your co downloading collectibles that you previously uploaded and uploading newly acquired ones. Would you like to synchronize them now? Yes. I suppose. What's this? Wager notes. Notes carried back and forth by runners covered in different handwriting. What do you say, gentlemen? Three days before the Inquisition sees sense and aligns itself with all layer properly this time? Nonsense, Marcel. Ferelden is here for blood. A day before they either demand it outright or threaten war on us if they don't get it. The divine will intercede. She must. Victoria and the Inquisition are too closely connected in everyone's eyes for her not to interfere. You have great confidence in the Chantry, Alan. A thousand royals worth of confidence from each of you if the Divine settles the fate of the Inquisition. Done. A thousand from each of you once the Inquisitionists exceed sovereignty to all lay in the Council of Heralds. You two will beggar me. Leonard, are you out? Don't be ridiculous. A thousand royals on the thrones get in their way after all. <laughs> Fair enough. Understandable wages, aren't they, really? Do we, do, do we have any point, really, in trying to craft anything else? I mean, we have Lord only knows number of uh, uh, schematics, etc. So the best one would be the Stone Stalker Blade, which could be a max of 421. And I'm pretty sure we have... Uh, to be fair, let's see if we can make a dagger which can be 460 something, whatever it was. I don't think we have the materials need needed to create sort of the grand ones anyway, so um, I, d I doubt we'll have any more uh, research, so... Oh, hello. More expensive dog treats? I'm not sure exactly what this serves. Ooh, we can look through a spyglass. Wow, look at look at the grand view from, from the palace. That's beautiful. That looks like a village straight out of like Jade em Jade Empire or something. That that looks like a village that you would see on like a grand strategy map, you know, just like all the all, all like the um the houses just kind of bundled together. Storms of Temptation. Uh, this tattered novel builds itself as a sweeping romance on the eight seas by Danel Mithril. The cover shows a dark-skinned elf with long platinum hair hanging by one hand from the mast of his ship. A dagger in his teeth, a woman in an elaborate mask, low-cut dress, and almost as much hair as the elf gasps up from the base of the mast. The elf is glaring at a tanned and chiseled human pirate, grinning as, as his vessel pulls alongside the elf's ship. For the first Elven captain in the Antivan Navy, Kiel Zebulon's inaugural assignment was a routine trading mission down to Wycom. Little did he know that that fiery amethyst Kuron, a passenger he picks up in the free marches, was heir to an enormous fortune, a fortune Ravani pirate prince Elrada Hurrican would do anything to get his hands on. Unable to resist Amethyst's plea for help, Kiel found himself racing to get her back to Val Royale, even as the ferocious Hurrican pursued them, and their passions ensured that eight seas would never be the same. There is a note scribbled on the inside cover in dainty handwriting. If found, please return to Lady Yvette Montilly here. Lady Yvette. Josephine's sister. <laughs> is that more dog... Why are we picking these up? Is my question. Right, what's this? Hard in Hightown Chapter 13. By Varric Tetheris, in the Low Town Bazaar, Don and Paul's to pay a little elven girl to, pay, to play courier for him before making the long climb back uphill to Hightown. A careful glance told him the scar-faced Ander and the tattooed chasing were still tailing him. 
Donlan was certain they'd love the Viscount's keep. He passed beneath the stone gaze of the, Cormor the Cormorant statues, flanking the gates and nodded to the guards on his way to the barracks. No one noticed his ragged, bloody clothing, which disappointed him as much as he benefited, much as, much as he benefited from it. Recruits these days always slacking off. Donnan bypassed the captain's office and went looking for Jevlin. By now the kid ought to be rested up, and Donnan suspected he would need backup if his large, suspicious shadows decided to pick a fight. But Jevlin's bunk was empty. Donnan noticed blood splatter on the bedding and a scent and a scent like lilacs. All of his gear was missing, and the centre of the bunk was a note to bring the blade to the keys tonight at midnight, or the boy dies. It was signed with the wax seal six crossed swords. Ah, so that would must have been the same sort of sign that was in that was left in at one of the murder murder points, right? Pair of paddles. What 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 are these things that we're picking up? Genuinely, I don't I don't know what the hell we're doing with the with the, with the majority of these things. Seriously, it's crazy. Ooh, Veron's tinctures. Hard in Hightown, Chapter 17. Donnan left it to his captain and a dozen of Kirkwall's finest to drag Wagner and his thugs to the stocks. The heavy air gave up and turned into sheets of rain. The ancient grey stone stairs leading up to Low Town turned into a waterfall. Donnan slogged up the narrow passage, boots squelching with every step. He almost didn't hear the ambush coming. As he reached the top of the stairs, a faint rasp of steel made him throw himself aside into a vegetable seller's table. A sword swung through the air where he'd been and chimed against the rock wall. Donnan fumbled at his scabbard and just managed to catch the second blow with his sword. He had one moment as they locked blades, locked blades to, re to recognise his attacker. The younger man had, ha had shed his guard uniform for dark leathers, and his left arm now ended in a bandaged stump, but there was no mistake in him. Jevlin? Where is the blade of Asari and Jevlin recovered from the pa parry blow to slash at Donnan's legs? He dodged, he dodged back, slipping and nearly stumbling ass first down the stairs. It was you, the inside man. You're the one who killed Defavre. Donnan lunged at the recruit. Jevlin quickly moved to block, but Donnan's blade sliced his arm, drawing blood. Give me the sword. I know that pirate hag gave it to you. Jevlin sw swung a series of hard slashes, trying to break Donnan's guard or knock him down the stairs. In the darkness and the driving rain, the guardsman struggled to see his attacker. Still, Donnan grinned. You left it at the key. I guess you ran off without it when the lady took your hand off. Not my fault you picked a fight you couldn't win. He tried to edge away from the stairs, but the rookie kept him pinned between the vegetable stall and the and fall to his death. Jevlon lunged, his blade punching through Donnan's armour just below his ribs, but the recruit slipped on the wet stone during his attack and stumbled into his enemy. Donnan shoved him away and over the stairs. His fall ended with a sickening crack of bones. Crick a crack of broken bones. Donnan drew a ragged breath and pulled Jevlon's sword from his side, trying not to slip on his blood. The chantry was a long way off. I feel like I missed out on so much there. Varric's a hell of a writer, it must be said. What's this now? Notes on palace guests. Countess Devore wants a stateroom set aside from 3 to 5 in the afternoon for her daughter's half practice. Must have windows on one side and a balcony. If she proposes a recital, refer her to the Seneschal. Duke Pierpone wants to entertain Ferelden relatives. A barrel of whiskey and three wheels of cheese to be delivered to his quarters this evening. Ban Wharton. His bed should be made up with linens, not silks. Sir Litstone complains an old wound in her left leg is making itself felt. So move her to the ground floor. Lady Galette, a duelist, has requested a sparring partner in a suitable practice ground. Lord Gilderay, to be woken at eight by a maid on even days, a page boy on odd days, don't ask, with a fresh pitcher of water and twelve sprigs of lavender on a peach-coloured towel, don't ask. Cal carrying these items in silently without making eye contact with his lordship, placing them on the, div on the divan, clapping twice, then leaving without a word. Do not ask. I've heard of eccentric guests, but that's, uh, something. Hello there, Charter. Well met, your worship. I vaguely remember you, Charter, but I can't remember where from. Conduct becoming the Inquisition. To all members of the Inquisition, it has come to my attention that I must remind everyone, um of the type of behaviour expected from us during the Exalted Council. It is natural to wish to hold our heads high, but remember that we are guests of the Imperial Court. It is upon us to behave with good grace, propriety and restraint. If you are unsure of how to address someone of gentle birth, my lord or my lady will suffice. If you are fearful that you have overstepped an unknown protocol, speak with your, uh, with your commanders. If they are not available, seek me out. 
Over imbibing is strongly discouraged at, at all times. If you are steered into an argument about the Inquisition's politics, politely excuse yourself as quickly as possible. Please do not engage in these debates. If all else fails, trust sense and common courtesy to guide your actions. Lady Montelier. And what's this one? Activity in the Winter Palace. See, there's a lot of, there's a lot of reading material here, isn't there? Isn't there? Charter's notes. Ah, so our charter is, uh, is, uh, is the, one of Liliana's agents, isn't she? Of course she is. Charter's notes are in, 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 in an encryption she developed with Liliana over the last couple of years. CM's intentions seem sincere. Agent in palace at party tonight where CM is attending. VP left notes at drop, as promised. Servant in green library seen leaving guest wing of palace at odd hours. Poss po possible tryst. Madame LV's second cousin is a bard and employee of Duke WM. Lord WG plans to meet Lady GD tonight. Neither, neither of their spouses know. Touchy. Uh, Lord RW plans to meet Lady SR tonight. Their spouses do know. Lord RW's wife encourages RW to step out with SR so she can have some peace and quiet to herself. Fair enough. So this is like an Inquisition hidey hole in the palace, isn't it? I am bull in the last few years. Ah, thank you for sending the charges to assist in dealing with the, with the demons attacking Montfort. Their assistance was most appreciated and many lives were saved. The Iron Bull and his charges have prevented another civil war from sweeping across all lay with their efforts in Perrondale. The Iron Bull in particular defeated the would-be usurper in combat. We must protest the actions of the Bull's charges in the South Reach. While the presence of demons and Templars corrupted by Red Lyrium is undisputed, the necessity of your Dwarven Miner collapsing the better parts of a mountain on the enemy forces was hardly necessary. <laughs> the Bull's charges were of great assistance in driving back the demons that attacked the shores of Lake Kalanad. The elf who calls herself Dalish was particularly helpful, and I look forward to her promised explanation of how Dalish archery techniques can create walls of ice or dispel magic barriers. <laughs> ah, the charges. A, fa a fantastic bunch, truly. Ah, so we can, so we have these different uh, immortal armor. Blimey, that is a interesting. What about eternal armor? Hmm, I don't know. I feel I feel like we probably shouldn't. Uh, Days vigil. That's 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 not bad. What about night's watch. They're all very similar in style. There's different color schemes, really, aren't they? Midnight Tower. Uh. Yeah, we'll wear the Midnight Tower as a as a as a, as a bit of a difference, you know. I think. Excellent. Wait, did did did, did we not already read this? Oh, Dory in the last few years. Inquisitor, it is good to hear from you, my friend. For months I've had only the Society of Mavaris' fledgling Lucerne party. Junior members of the Magisterium, so filled with fire and zeal and so wildly inept at politics, may keeps a bucket of ice water on hand in case one accidentally immolates himself. Lest I give you the wrong impression, we are making progress, but it will take a great deal of skill to keep the Lucerne alive through the, unusual, through the usual schedule, if Minrath is scheming long enough to become a real political faction. Fortunately, they do have me. I'm sorry to hear that politics are plaguing you as well. It must be something going around, like a pestilence or an Orlesian fashion trend. Hopefully, Josephine can defuse the Ferelden and outcry and persuade the Orlesians to stop circling you with a collar and leash. You know she did always love a challenge. I'll find an excuse to make a trip south soon. We should really catch up in person, don't you agree? Ah, oh, Dorian, what a guy. Right, I think on that note, guys, we are going to end the episode here. We will carry on uh, with, our exp with our explorations of this... Uh, palace in the next episode so thank you very much for watching i do hope you all have enjoyed if you have them please like comment subscribe and share and i shall catch you all in the next episode of dragon age inquisition thanks again guys have a wonderful day bye bye